Today I want to talk to you about something new. Something from Wham Bam Systems that's really exciting me. So stay tuned to today's 3D print. So this company contacted me and said that I'd like to redo, review their print surface. And I was like, well, what kind? And he says, uh, uh, spring steel plate magnetic removable print surface. And I was like, hell yes. <laughs> I kind of like that idea of a removable print surface. This hangs at just the right height to bang the table. So they sent me one. And apparently they're going to be starting a Kickstarter to fund it or something like that. So normal quid pro quo is about being careful with Kickstarter applies. But they're clearly already producing samples. So they're making stuff already. So I've been abusing it and torturing it. <laughs> um, I printed out a whistle. You can see that nice glassy surface. I really like that. No warp. I printed out a pair of the, the pliers. These are really nice. You can see how each piece has that glossy surface. And I have the Harry Bear. Nice glossy surface, no warping. I don't expect PLA to warp, but sometimes like on PEI, the very edges, or ultra base, the very edges will warp a little tiny bit. But none on this. Pair of the little nozzle dusters. And of course, the gnome. I like the proto gnome, it's one of my standard prints now. It's got a nice glossy surface there. Most of these didn't even require abusing the print surface, you know, cracking it. But the way it works is I took off the original print surface that came with the printer. That was the uh, fiberglass sheet with the Creality surface that you'd use the binder clips to hold on. That's the reason I chose this printer that made it easiest. I didn't have to peel off a sticker. <laughs> so this is the spring steel plate. And it has what's called PEX, P-E-X. Not entirely sure what that is. I'll have to look it up. I have a skirt from a previous model on here. Just pop it under the edge there and get that off. There we go. That skirt comes right off. The um, It comes as three pieces. You have the, the magnetic sheet, which is the like magnetic sticker style sheet. But it's not normal. It's not like the stuff you get on Amazon. It's quite heavy, actually. I would not want to put this on top of a piece of glass. That would add a lot of weight to the bed. But um, it's got the 3M adhesive on the back. And then the magnetic sheet sticks to the spring steel. I've run this thing for hours and hours and hours at 125 degrees Celsius, and it has not lost any of its magnetism. They claim it is safe to 130 degrees Celsius for its curry temperature, which is really impressive. Then the print surface itself is kind of like PEI. They call it PEX, whatever that means. Um, but it's a, it's a different surface than PEI, and you see it's transparent. You can see the Wham Bam logo, the laser etched into the spring steel. And most of the time, especially with PLA, prints just pop off. So when the whistle was done, it just came right off. You just pull it off once it's cooled down. Um, if you want to cool it down fast, if like me, you have a metal table like this, you can just pop that print surface off, lay it on top of the metal table, and this thing cools down like 30 or 40 seconds because the table acts as a heat conductor and sucks all the heat right out of it. cools it down quick. Because if you try to pop it off early, your part itself might still be soft and it might warp. So let the part cool down, and then you can just give it a little flex if you even need to. Um, it does have these little tabs, so you can pop it off easy. Be careful when you're printing ABS in higher temperatures. This thing can get really hot. <laughs> And that's it. It's super simple. I mean, now there is a catch the magnetic sheet. The magnetic sheet is flexible. Okay, that means it will shape itself to the shape of your bed, which means your bed needs to already be flat. So if you cannot print directly on your bed, you will have a little bit of difficulty printing on this because it will take the shape of your bed. The spring steel will help a little bit to compensate. It does come with four little 3M adhesive aluminum shims. So you can use that to find the low spots on your bed and then stick those shims underneath there to make this come out a little bit more level. Um, but if your bed is pretty badly warped and you really have to use a piece of glass on top of it, 
then you're going to want to put this on top of the glass and not on top of the aluminum bed. Once you have the magnetic sheet on the bed, the spring steel plate with its PEX surface, which you apply very easy. It's one of those kind of things where you just start it on the edge and you just work it down as you apply it. Super easy. It's, it's so thick that you don't have to worry about it flopping where it's not supposed to. Keep it up at an angle like this. Line up your rear edge and then just let it snap into place. It's as easy as that. I mean, it's, it's, it's ridiculously easy. I want this on all my printers now. <laughs> I really want this on all my printers now. I, I got to find out how much more of these spring steel plates cost. Because for the higher temperature prints, this would be great for popping a print off, putting it aside to cool down, and then taking a fresh sheet, popping it back on without even letting the bed cool down. Just just go. Hit, hit, the, hit the print button and go again. Uh, very, very impressive, though. I love this thing. For example, on these kind of prints, on the Ultra Base and the PEI, no matter what you do, unless you use a brim, even the little edge of these things just—it it doesn't make it warp. But you can, if you look at it, you can tell that the little edge has popped up a little bit. Doesn't happen on this; it sticks down hard. Same thing with the Proto Gnome. It's the little gear teeth. They tend to peel up a tiny bit. Not much, you know. It doesn't affect the model any, but it's that little bit you can tell. You'll look at the surface and you'll see that it's slightly different on the edges. Because it peeled up just a tiny bit. Never happens in this. I'm impressed. I'm very, very impressed. And I look forward to seeing what they come out with. Um, their prices are extremely aggressive. I hope they can maintain those prices after the Kickstarter. Um, I think this was like $68, I think. I think is the retail price for this. Um, if you look up Wham Bam Systems, you can see their prices for the regular and the deluxe. They're supposed to be having a Kickstarter in a week or two. And I, I just might try to get in on that. <laughs> <laughs> get some early bird deals because I, I want a few of these this is this is interesting this is this is something I'm willing to gamble a little bit of my money on take a risk because I like it so I'm hoping the fact that they already have samples you know materials already obviously the PEX is ready they're even engraving their stuff although that doesn't take a whole lot to do that um, that indicates to me though that they do have a final product so it's just a matter of ramping up production the Kickstarters that worry me is when they don't have a final product. And they're hoping to make a final product. That's when you got to be worried. <laughs> but as always, just use your brain. Use your judgment. Don't gamble more money than you can risk. Um, when you sign up for a Kickstarter, you are not buying a product. You are donating money to a company. And they don't have to send you anything. That doesn't mean they won't. I've only ever had one Kickstarter fail, and that's the Peachy Printer. Every other Kickstarter, I've gotten a product. Uh, except for Sabertron. I haven't got the Sabertrons yet, but they're coming. Um, but besides that, I've gotten them all, so just use your head. This one, I'm, I'm leaning toward thinking this one is safe, especially since they already have product. And I'd like to see it succeed, because the alternatives to this are very, very expensive. <laughs> um, I hope they all survive. So check it out, see what you think. I'll have a link down below that's not an affiliate link, that's just... They sent me the product, and I'm saying, sure, here's a review. And I'm showing it to you guys, so I don't make anything from those links. So use your judgment, and if you think you like it, check it out. If not, don't. You can wait until the final product is released, but I'm kind of excited. I, I like this. I really I really was questioning their 130-degree curry temperature claim, but I, ran, I still have to run an ABS print. I haven't done that yet, but... Um, I ran this thing for half a day at 125 degrees Celsius. Just let it sit here running at 125 Celsius. Because I can't put PLA on a 125 Celsius bed. And it just ate it up. It didn't care. You know, every now and then I come by and I check and see if the magnets are still sticking. And now overnight it cooled down and the magnets feel just as strong as when I first put it on here. So it is not degaussing at high temperature. That's impressive. I thought you had to use neodymiums to handle high temperature. But apparently... Iron ferrous magnets can also be had at higher quality. I was not expecting that. So I'm going to try to get some more of them. <laughs> you guys have a great day. I will have a couple of little add-on clips of um, the ABS prints I try on this. I'm looking for a roll of ABS now. So if I find a roll of ABS, I will tack on some clips at the end of this um, video. So this is the... Uh, sample ABS print on the Wham Bam surface. 
and I had the bed at 125 Celsius and the nozzle at 250 Celsius and the magnets still work perfectly. They're not losing their magnetism. It's very hot to touch, so it literally just finished. So I gotta pop this off and put it over here on something cooler because it's really hot. <laughs> so I put it on top of the um, tabletop so it can dissipate the heat because so I want to keep this hot. So I get the next print going. I'll keep it nice and hot. And I'm going to show you guys me removing this print. That cools down very fast on this surface here because the table acts as a giant heat sink and slurps all the heat right out of it. But you just give it a little twist like that. Look at that. That ABS print stuck down fantastically. No warping whatsoever. Now this is a very small print, but not even the edges warped. That print went nowhere. Very good. No cracking either. Being able to keep the bed at 125 means that the heat envelope above the bed is actually pretty tall. I'd say it goes about this high where I can still feel some pretty generous warmth. Which means I could probably print something that tall. Maybe that tall and get away with it so I'm going to try to print that in ABS now this came off of the printer in PLA and you can see you get that nice glossy that nice glossy finish there you go very very cool so the surface is completely undamaged actually it left a little tiny bit of the PLA behind on the surface interesting or the um, ABS then you take your IPA and give it a rub down before starting your next print and just pop this bad boy right back on there so so far not a problem handling the 125 C bed not bad stay tuned I'm gonna print something bigger and here we go this is the large ABS print apparently having the bed at 200, 125 degrees Celsius was a little too high. It was actually softening the infill. It was sinking. <laughs> so, here we go. Is that, what the heck is that? Oh, wow. Okay. So, there's your magnetic surface. You see it still sticks. No problem. So, it handled, um, what was that? seven and a half hours plus the first two hour print at 125 celsius so high temperature is not a problem and then we just give it a little flex little flex little flex and the print pops right off and that's an abs print with no warping at all look at that totally flat zero warp even these little pointy ends, which tend to warp. No warp whatsoever. So ABS sticks great, from what I understand. Yeah, you can see I over-melted the infill. The bed temp was actually too high. <laughs> and amazingly, even in that larger model, no cracking. This was the Micro 3D, the M3D ABSR in clear. And it handled it like a champ, both the printer, CR20, and the Surface. Nice. So there you go. PLA, ABS, it's supposed to handle PETG, everything else, no problem at all. I will keep testing it. I will keep running through it. Yeah, that. I think I had my bed level too close the first time, because that time it came off nice and clean. Very little residue, and the little bit of residue that's left just comes right off. Very nice. The Surface is pretty cool. Well, there you have it. I found the ABS, and I was able to print on the ABS. Um, almost an eight-hour print, plus the hour and a half it took to print the whistle. And um, it handled like a champ. No warpage whatsoever. I'm repeating myself. I already said that in the ABS clip. But um, absolutely zero warpage in the bottom. It did not peel up at all, which is seriously impressive. And then you just let it cool, flex it, and it pops off. I'm impressed. Actually, you guys can see that. There we go. But uh, I'm seriously impressed. That was pretty cool. 
So I look forward to seeing what they come out with, and I hope they succeed. So you guys stay tuned. I'll be doing more prints on this. I am leaving this on this printer. I'm not taking it off. I enjoy it too much. <laughs> Plus, it would destroy it to take it off. That's it. You guys enjoy.